Finally tonight, the latest video game craze to sweep the United States and Japan. It's called Nintendo. We have a report from Lee Hochberg of public station KCTF Seattle. Eleven world-class contenders. Take them down with your controller, beat them all, and you've got a shot at Tyson's title. Hill base, adjust your infield or outfield, and pull off great double play. I flip over Atari baseball, and you will too. Afterburner, only on the Sega system. Sega, the challenge will always be there. Last year in the United States, home video game sales hit $1.1 billion, driven by the game's popularity among 8 to 14-year-old boys. Actually, my dad plays a lot, too. The best games are the ones that, that have, like, a lot of levels, and, and it, you can't, you know, pass right away. You have to, you have to take a while. You've got to beat Mike Tyson. <laughs> Mike Tyson's Punch-Out from Nintendo. Now you're playing with power. Japanese-owned Nintendo of America has emerged as the industry leader. The company is based just outside Seattle, where it employs 275 workers serving the U.S. market. Its high-tech, high-profit products accounted for over 70% of all home video game sales in 1987. The company expects industry sales to double this year. Nintendo and its chief competitors, Sega and Atari, have seen the industry go through major changes in its 20-year history. With the Atari 2600 video game system, games don't get older, they get better. Take Space Wars from 1979 versus the Solaris of today. The home video fad of the early 80s had a spectacular rise, but the bottom fell out of the first home video boom virtually overnight. In 1983, earnings for the industry peaked at $3 billion. Only two years later, sales plummeted to a paltry $100 million. Industry experts like Howard Phillips, a product analyst at Nintendo, blame the poor quality of the early video game systems for the market's collapse. When it first came out in the early 80s, uh, everybody rushed out to get one. It was so marvelous that you could have this in your home. It was great technology. It was something that, that all the kids were rushing to in the arcades. It was very, very enticing. Unfortunately, it was also junk. The current success of home video games, like Nintendo's hot-selling Legend of Zelda, lies in their advanced technology and challenging complexity. The old games were simply too simple. The difference between 1982 and 83 and 1985, 6, and 7 is technology has taken a substantial leap in our favor. On a computerized circuitry, one action for instance, pushing the A button on, in Mike Tyson's Punch-Out initiates a whole series of responses that, you're going to, that are going to be depicted on the video screen. You're going to see um, your character pull back on his arm like he's going to throw a punch. You're going to see Mike Tyson start to lean away a little bit. Maybe his eyebrows will start to flicker a little bit because he, he's bracing for the blow that's coming from you. <laughs> <laughs> the newest Nintendo game programs are developed in Japan, then they're transmitted electronically to the United States. Masahiro Ishizuka is part of the Nintendo R&D team. We try to receive uh, all games uh, over the telephone line for the evaluation, and, uh, and we uh, feed back to Japan uh, to meet uh, American needs. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, Super Mario Brothers, Kid Icarus, and Metroid are among Nintendo's biggest sellers, but so far, none has surpassed Zelda in popularity. The game is a complex, high-tech adventure fantasy. It can take up to 90 hours to successfully complete, and it's not uncommon for kids to spend hours playing it non-stop. It's also not uncommon for parents to become concerned over video game addiction, that's according to University of Washington psychologist Laura Kastner. Well, I think the biggest problem is that the, the stimulus value of the video games is so high that the children are likely to want to spend a great deal of time involved with them. And then the parents start having concerns about whether this is the kind of activity they want the child to be involved in for four or five hours a night. I remember every day after school, I used to rush home to play my Nintendo, and I'd just spend hours and hours and just 
play it all just from when I got home from school until I went to bed. <laughs> I know this kid, he's, he's 13 years old and he plays it all the time. Like He's like how Zach used to be. He, pl he plays it, goes home, plays Nintendo, plays it before dinner, eats dinner, goes back, plays Nintendo, plays it till he goes to bed. The parents worry the most where the children are, are clearly um, uh, mo more involved with this than anything else and uh, drawing back, uh, withdrawing from other activities that might be growthful and, and good for them. The legend of Zelda is so complex and kids are so driven to unlock the secrets of the game that they, like their parents, may turn to counselors for help. They don't turn to psychologists, however, but to professional video game counselors. What'll happen is you'll get sucked into that pipe. Take care. Okay? Bye. And you'll go down into another warp zone. And what you're going to want to do then is go into that first warp pipe, and that will take you down to the minus world. Nintendo of America has 75 full-time game counselors on staff. They handle an average of 25,000 phone calls from all over the country each week, calls that are not toll-free. No, you're going to get the red candle in seven, just like in the first quest. Uh, uh, how do you get the tripod? Okay, there's another secret passage. You know where that room that, that has nothing in it? Oh, yeah. The Legend of Zelda, like Donkey Kong and many other video games before it, revolves around the age-old theme of a maiden in distress, which may be one reason boys, not girls, find the games so seductive. Clearly, the population that's more interested in them and more involved in them is uh, our boys. And the reason for that is probably just more evidence of the sex typing in our culture, which our boys are more competitive, task-oriented, uh, activity-oriented. So this is playing right into their interests. By the end of this year, we will have, I think, close to 90, 90 or 95 percent of uh, households with boys between the ages of 8 to 16. So that means if you see a boy on the street, he's got one in his house. Nintendo recently developed a new video game that's designed to attract girls and which may ruffle a few feminists' feathers. It's aerobics. While boys seek to become heroes by rescuing fair maidens, girls are expected to work on their thighs. For those interested in something a little more assertive for girls, Dr. Kastner has a suggestion. I don't know what the game would be, but it would be something about, the attractive, I think, would be beating out men going up a corporate ladder or something like that. In addition to improved graphics and advanced technology, Nintendo also owes some of its staggering success to its aggressive marketing strategies. Nintendo kiosks are popping up in shopping malls all over America. And in Japan, where one in every three homes is equipped with a Nintendo Entertainment System, extraordinary demand for the product has drawn worldwide media attention. All of Teenage Tokyo seemed to beat a path to the door of the store, selling its latest video game cassette in an unprecedented display of consumer frenzy. The lines outside the Tokyo shop were so long that some waited for 20 hours just for the chance to buy the latest in a series of computer games called Dragon 3. Nintendo's success in both Japan and the United States is helping fuel expansion at its American plant. The company is enlarging its facility to meet growing demand. And with Nintendo equipment in millions of homes, Howard Phillips says that video games are just the beginning. And Nintendo has got a piece of electronic gear which is in quite a few households now, and we're looking to get it in as many households as we can. In the future, who knows what we'll be able to do with this in addition to the home video entertainment.